What I really like about this question is that there's a way to solve it without actually really knowing how to solve it. Let me explain. If you look at the answer choices, answer choices D and E really don't make sense at all because the units of R and the units of E should be the same units, whether they're centimeters or feet or inches. They have to be some kind of one-dimensional length kind of measurement. After all, the radius is a length and the edge of the cube is also a length. So any equation that has r on the one side with the square root of e or e squared doesn't make any sense because then the units on either side of the equal sign don't match. So that's a way to eliminate d and e right off the bat. And then if you look at the remaining answer choices, a, b, and c, the only one that makes sense in those three is a, because the radius has to be smaller than the edge. I mean, can you imagine a situation in which the radius of the sphere is longer than the edge of the cube, given that the cube contains the sphere inside of it? That's nonsensical. So since a is the only answer choice among the remaining three that shows that r is smaller than e, I'd go ahead and pick that one and move on to the next question. Now in terms of how to actually solve this question, we'd have to visualize this sphere inside of the cube. Inscribed means that the sphere is touching the cube on all sides, but is not going past those sides. So it's fully encased within this cube, and it's essentially as large as it could possibly be while still being inside the cube. So if you visualize that and you imagine the radius of the sphere, and then maybe double that to look at the diameter of the sphere, that diameter would have to exactly match the edge of the cube. That's the only way that your sphere is going to be as large as it can possibly be within the cube. So if the diameter of the sphere is equal to the edge of the cube, then the radius of the sphere is half the edge of the cube. So again, that leads us to answer choice A, and we're ready to move on to the next one. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.